Okay, Deputy Lewis, uh, you were uh, heading a, uh, a scrutiny panel looking at uh, care for the elderly in Jersey, and you produced a report. Uh, first of all, what actually is the category for what are elderly people? Well, uh, in common sense terms, it's uh, essentially people 65 or over. But of course, there are people younger who, for various reasons, end up, uh, for example, in residential care, or who might get a, a stroke earlier in life, or uh, might have the early onset of Parkinson's. So often, although we <coughs> tie it to an age, the reality is increasingly, uh, I suppose, in some respects, it's being tied to conditions as well. Did you attempt to sort of work out how many people were involved, how many people were receiving the sort of care you were looking at in Jersey? We didn't, uh, we didn't go to every agency and ask them. We basically went with statistics that, you know, the numbers that we're going to have in the community are going to uh, exponentially grow in the next uh, few decades. Right. And this is going to place an enormous burden on things like insurance systems and on facilities that we have. Of course, you say about the, the, the type of person who would be receiving care. Of course, from day one, everybody receives care because you're babies. And uh, some people always require care. So yes. the, the problem extends throughout all age groups. So really, the problem, from my perspective, is really one of disability rather more than being elderly. It's not an age problem. It's, it's one of disability. You, do you not see it in that way? I would say it's both, actually. I think it's, uh, you're quite right. It's disability, and certainly because... Um, medically people uh, survive longer, albeit with uh, quite difficult conditions. That is putting pressure on the system. But obviously people are living longer and um, the hope is rather than uh, moving into residential care, they can stay in the community. Right. And, and that means we've got to really reconfigure community services. And although, for example, we know uh, family nursing does an excellent job now, uh, it's nothing to the job it can be called it will be called upon to perform in the next well, of course of a, a great deal of it is done on a charitable basis isn't it care in the community you say family care i mean but a lot of that is on a charitable basis and the hospice these sort of organizations exist on a charitable basis absolutely well um, the biggest charity of all of course are the carers themselves indeed. people who look after their parents or their brothers their sisters their friends and they uh, they make an enormous contribution and quite frankly we probably underestimated it right. and we're going to have to build in massive support for these people mm. uh, because often it disrupts their lives you know they have to give up work or they have to be on duty so to speak for every part of the working and day. there are people who throughout their life require intensive care people who've had an accident head injury that sort of thing yes throughout their yeah. life will require yeah, that absolutely. sort of care i mean in your report you you sort of looked in some concern, with some concern, at the standard of carers and the way they were selected and the supervision of carers. Uh, is that something that you think it can be addressed? Is it, is it realistic to, uh, because of the personal nature of it, because the people are working in their own homes, is that realistic to have supervision of carers? Um, no, I wouldn't say supervision, but certainly, as with children, for example, who are at risk, you would expect people like social workers or family nursing who might be involved. If they saw what appeared to be disturbing uh, matters in a home, you would expect them to, uh, to report that. But a lot more of our concern was about people obviously employed in uh, homes, in residential right. homes, yes. nursing homes. And uh, again, the people who work there, they're incredibly uh, dedicated people, often working for not very much money. Indeed. And, and we get tremendous dedication from those people. But we, have, we do have to be careful that we do vet them uh, that thoroughly. Because that is an aspect of care. People want the highest standard of care, but they want it at the least possible cost. So you're, you're, you're tending to get people who are doing lots of cleaning type jobs or menial jobs, but they're being called carers and uh, they're not necessarily trained in that area. They're not necessarily trained, but they often, um, just by their humanity, they often make a massive contribution. Indeed, I mean, do. the classic people have to be the family nursing people who yeah. go and do, I don't know, dressings in homes of an evening. Um, they do a lot more, a lot of them, than just dress a person yeah. uh, for a wound, for example. They provide emotional support. They will often be the only visitor that person will have during the day. Um, and, and we've really got to treasure those people. But when you're looking after people in residential homes, 24 hours a day, they're, they're massive staff resources. And of course, one of the problems, either because of the money or because of the nature of the work um, that Jersey and Britain suffer from, of course, is um, local people will not often do this work. You have to import well, staff to course, do this work. There's a local group of uh, residential care homes which supposedly are 
in debt to the tune of 1.2 billion at the current time. So it's not exactly a money-making scheme necessarily, even though they possibly charge their customers, residents, a thousand pounds a week. So it's uh, on the one hand, it's very expensive to be in residential care, but it's not necessarily cost-effective for someone to run it as a business. So no, it did at one point appear to be cost-effective because obviously uh, the cash flow can be tremendous, particularly as. Uh, governments, and of course the states did that when it partly closed Overdale, as governments send more and more people to stay in private homes, they get an almost a short stream of uh, income. But of course, a lot of these companies, some of whom are owned by Middle East interests, they're highly leveraged companies, and uh, they require this money to keep flowing, yeah. because they don't, uh, generally speaking, from what I understand, own the property. And one of the issues we, we raised was, what should be the balance between what the public owns, in other words, for example, should we keep Overdale or redevelop Overdale, and how many places should we buy within, um, within you know, residential and nursing homes? Of course, uh, residential homes aren't the entire answer. In fact, uh, living in the community to a large extent means living in your own home and one of the big problems is of course homes are not designed to accommodate people with disabilities. You've put your finger on it Mike because uh, as we investigated we discovered that Jersey has a very high proportion of people in uh, residential care and as the numbers increase there was a real worry whether we've got, despite the excellent work of family nursing, enough people in the community to deal not only with the uh, what you might call the ongoing things, bathing people at night, but quite complex care needs and the housing provision. We um, Guernsey, uh, they, they've gone in for a state's commission review of uh, over 55's uh, housing, whereas Jersey's allowed this issue to be development-led. Yeah. And uh, our view is you get a mix of provision which may not match what you need for the medium and long term. You know, a developer will build uh, quite nice sites like um, Lermitage or Oaklands and so forth. But of course, you need people to build, as you say, houses that are very, um, you know, that have got a lot of complex... Realistically, for the sort of, when you look at the whole uh, range of requirements that there are for people from a very young age to a very old age to be, to be cared for, realistically, in this community, is the money ever going to be found? Are the facilities ever going to be there? They're only going to be there if we, um, either if we increase taxation or, which is an issue the committee looked at in some depth, we move to uh, an insurance scheme like Guernsey has, which at the moment only covers residential care. We'd quite like to see one that covers community care as well, where you can buy portions of community care and maybe 20% you pay totally for yourself, but the rest will come from the insurance fund, some kind of partnership through insurance because I don't think the tax system is, can deal with it unless we really decide to spend our money very differently. Thanks much indeed. Thank